Sing them over again to me, the wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see, the wonderful words of life. That's a song that is an old song that brethren have sung for years, talking about the wonderful words that we find in the scripture that describe the life that we have in Christ Jesus. As we're continuing this series and looking at certain words that are the words of life. They're the words about the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. We've already looked at the word justification. How that the word justification means to be declared not guilty. It means that through Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, we can stand before God not guilty by His blood. We looked at the word sanctification. Sanctification is a process. It's a process by which we are to be holy before God. We are to walk closer to the Lord and further away from the world. So sanctification, as we looked at that word in the past, deals with the concept of drawing closer to God and being separate from the world, being a holy people. Tonight I want to look at the word redemption. The word redemption. And we see a little bit of it illustrated in the life of the Israelites in Leviticus chapter 25. The whole chapter there is dealing with the concept of redeeming those who have become servants, indentured servants. They're in servitude. Can they be purchased to be set free? And therefore you're seeing the very definition of the word. Leviticus chapter 25, beginning in verses 47 through 52, it says, Now if a sojourner or a stranger close to you becomes rich, and one of your brethren who dwells by him becomes poor, and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner close to you, or to a member of the stranger's family. Notice, they sell themselves. They sell themselves to the stranger or the sojourner. Verse 48. After he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brothers may redeem him. Or his uncle, or his uncle's son may redeem him. Verse 49. Or anyone who is near of kin to him in his family may redeem him. Or if he is able, he may redeem himself. Thus, he shall reckon him with him who bought him. The price of his release shall be according to the number of years. From the year that he was sold to him until the year of Jubilee, it shall be according to the time of a hired servant for him. If there are still many years remaining according to them, he shall repay the price of his redemption. The price of his redemption from the money with which he was bought. And if there remain but a few years until the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon him according to the years and he shall repay him the price of his redemption. Here is a person that is sold into indentured servitude. And a near kinsman can redeem that person. A brother can do that. Or one of the relatives can do that. The word redemption means a release brought about by the payment of a ransom. The release brought about by the payment of a ransom. And so we see here that in this situation, here is a person under the law of Moses who becomes poor, and so he sells himself to a stranger or a sojourner. That person can be redeemed. And there is a price to be paid for that redemption. Verse 51. They reckon that according to what we find here in Leviticus chapter 25. 
We see the spiritual application of that, of course. The concept of needing redemption. The concept of we selling ourselves by our own sin to Satan. We go into bondage as a result of our own behavior and need to be redeemed. And the Bible speaks of this in the spiritual sense as well, in the Old Testament as well as in the New. Psalm 130, verse 7 and 8. Psalm 130, verse 7 and 8. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with Him is abundant redemption. And He shall redeem Israel from all His iniquities. Here redemption is spoken of in the spiritual sense. Iniquities, sin, rebellion causes us to go into bondage. And the Lord is the one who is abundant in redemption. And He is the one who can redeem us from all of our iniquities. Psalm 49. Psalm 49, verses 5 through 8. Notice this, Psalm 49, verses 5 through 8. Why should I fear in the days of evil, when the iniquity at my heels surrounds me? Those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly. The redemption of a soul is costly. Notice we saw in Leviticus chapter 25, for a person to be redeemed, the price of his redemption must be paid. Of course, that was talking about the physical release of someone who was in servitude, in physical servitude. But here we see that God is a God that's abundant in redemption. And that He will redeem His people from all their iniquities. Psalm 130, verse 7 and 8. However, that is something that cannot be purchased with riches. With the things of this world. And therefore, who is going to give a person or give to God a ransom for a person to redeem their soul? Verse 8. The redemption of their souls is costly. Now why is that the case? Why is that the case? Because the Bible teaches that sin ensnares us and traps us and only the Son of God can set us free. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And speaking to those Jewish leaders who did not realize that they were in bondage to sin... He says to them in John chapter 8, beginning in verse 34, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus here is talking about the spiritual bondage, spiritual servitude. And we know the wages of that. Romans 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death. That brings about separation from us, of us, from God. And we see here that only the Son, only Jesus, can make us free. Both Romans chapter 8 in this context and, excuse me, John chapter 8 in this context and Romans chapter 6 verses 12 through 23 make it very clear that sin, when we obey sin, when we obey our lusts, when we give in, we enter into bondage. And the only thing that can set us free is that which the Son of God offers. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember God is able, because He is abundant in redemption, He is able to forgive us of all of our iniquities, but the cost of my soul, the redemption of my soul, is costly. 
is costly. What did it cost? The blood of the Son of God. You see, Christians were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from their aimless conduct received by tradition from their fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Peter has in mind what we looked at in Leviticus chapter 25. How that a person could redeem themselves from physical servitude with physical money. You could have someone redeem you, a brother, an uncle, his son. Or, it says within the context of Leviticus chapter 25, 47 through 52, you could redeem yourself. But when it comes to the spiritual redemption, there's no way we could redeem ourselves. There's no way we could unsin. There's no way we could not or do away or cancel out our own iniquities. It cost dearly for our redemption. The blood of Jesus Christ. You see, when we take the Lord's Supper, we need to keep that in mind always. That this is the price of my redemption. That costly price. From the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Jesus suffered. He called it a baptism of suffering. That crown of thorns, that lacerated back, those hands nailed, that side pierced, those feet nailed in crucifixion. Quite literally, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, he suffered because that was the costly price to pay to redeem my soul and to redeem yours. And as we saw in Leviticus chapter 25, it had to be someone who was a brother, a kinsman to redeem. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17. Therefore in all things, talking about Christ, He had to be made like His brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Jesus is our near kinsman redeemer. He had to become human like I'm human, like you're human, in order to redeem us humans back to God the Creator. You see, the price of redemption is costly. Jesus had to become a curse for that to happen. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Paul talks about the cross being a curse. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You see, Christ had to become a curse. And that's something that is just, is just marvelous when you contemplate it. We have to understand that Jesus had to become a curse for us because The price of our redemption is costly. God is abundant in His redemption. However, there's a price that has to be paid for that redemption so that I could be set free, so that you could be set free from the bondage that we placed ourselves in. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. I can be a son of God, an adopted son of God, because of this redemption. Because in Him we have redemption through His blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His 
grace. You know, Jesus talked about the reason why He came. The, right, the reason why He came into the world. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. He said, For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to serve. Not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom. There's that payment that makes a release to those who are in bondage. He said, I came to serve and to give my life a ransom for many. Paul reminds the gospel preacher Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. You see, because Jesus was willing to pay that cost on the cross, to become that curse on the cross, that was a ransom paid. The redemption was paid in His blood so that we could have a mediator. So that we can have that high priest who is sympathetic to our human condition. You know, just our forgiveness is not the only thing that is under consideration when the Bible talks about redemption. You know, if you're in Christ Jesus right now, now, uh, you are a redeemed person. You are uh, one that's been forgiven. You've been purchased with the price. The church is the purchase of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. However, that's not the end of the story. There's something wonderful yet to come. And Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 8 and verse 23 when he's speaking of the resurrection of the dead when Christ returns. In Romans 8 and verse 23, Paul says, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. The redemption of our body there is referring to the resurrection from the dead that he elaborates on in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. How that we will be raised incorruptible, glorious, And our body now will be conformed to His glorious body. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. You know, I don't fully understand all that. But it sounds wonderful. That's something to look forward to. That's something that we have for us if we remain faithful. If we remain faithful to the Lord, we will have the redemption of our body. Our lowly body will be conformed to His glorious body in the resurrection at the end of time. So no wonder Jesus in Revelation chapter 5 is worshipped because of His redemption that He provides. Revelation 5 verse 9 and 10. Those in heaven sing praises to the Son of God. Revelation 5 verse 9 and 10. They sing a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us a kingdom of priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. We have the victory in Christ Jesus because in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. That indeed is amazing grace. If there's anyone here tonight that needs to obey the gospel, avail yourself of this opportunity because you may not ever have it ever again. It may be gone. This might be the last invitation song that you ever hear. You're not going to hear an invitation song on the day of judgment. Believe in Christ. Confess Him. 
Repent of your sins and be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And the Lord will redeem you. He will sanctify you. He will justify you. He will wash you by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you'll be a member of His church, not a denomination. His body. Acts 2 and verse 47. If you've done that and gone astray, you're walking away from salvation when you walk away from Jesus. Repent and come back to Him and He will abundantly pardon. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and while we sing.